شاگش نوفل سورس بشا نوفل خارون سانم نوفل کورن Brandon Sanderson is without a doubt the most successful fantasy author of the last decade. He is incredibly prolific, and even if you haven't read his books, there's a good chance you've heard his name. His self-professed magnum opus is the Stormlight Archive series, with a current total page count of almost 1,800,000 pages. All the books are set on the planet Roshar. In this video, we'll survey the languages of Roshar, one by one. We'll be solely using the canon from novels and Brandon Sanderson Q&As, and if you want to source for something, just leave a comment asking. None of the languages of Roshar are fully developed conlangs, but Brandon Sanderson has fleshed them out linguistically more than most authors would have. So let's dive deep into a world of raging storms and long dead gods, a world where humans are the aliens. Let's dive deep into Roshar. Minor spoiler warning, if you're someone who really likes to figure out the war of a world as you're reading it, come back to this video later. Specific plot elements, however, will not be revealed. This will be a three-part series with this video focusing on the languages of Roshar, the next on writing systems, and the third on Brandon Sanderson's method for language creation, as well as some non-Rosharian languages in the Cosmere. In order to understand Rosharian linguistics, we first have to understand the history of the sentient species on the planet. At first, Roshar was occupied by the Singers, humanoids with marble patterned skin of red and black or red and white, who are superficially similar to humans but under the surface very much not so. In the canon of the Cosmere, which is the shared universe of almost all of Brandon Sanderson's work, humans migrated from a planet known as Ashen after its ecological collapse, fleeing to Roshar, the nearest hospitable planet, for refuge. They were accepted by the Singers and given a space to live west of the Misted Mountains in Chinavar. But then something happened. And within only 70 years, humans had migrated all over the continent and displaced most of the singers, who were then either enslaved and mentally incapacitated, or forced to live on the Shattered Plains, a desolate landscape in southeastern Roshar. However, in two cases the singers intermixed with humans, on the Horn Eater Peaks and in Herdaz. At some point after, and we don't know when, the Iriali people, another humanoid race, arrived in northwestern Roshar from another planet, and still later, the Sleepless and the Sia arrived in Aimea, the far west. So as far as we know, five distinct humanoid races inhabit Roshar, although most of the Sleepless and Sia Aimeans were wiped out in the scouring of Aimea. So what does this tell us about the linguistics of Roshar? From this history, we can derive, confirmed by Brandon Sanderson, the four major language families of Roshar, and their constituents. The first language family, the only one native to the continent, is Dawnay, or Singer. The original inhabitants of Roshar were the Dawn Singers, the ancestors of today's singers. They spoke a language known as Dawn Chant. Dawn Chant was untranslatable for thousands of years till Navani Cholin, listening to one of Dalinar's visions, recognized a Dawn Chant phrase. This discovery led her sister in law, Yasna Cholin, to lead a team of scholars who eventually succeeded in translating ancient Dawn Chant texts from around the world. Here's an example of reconstructed Dawn Chant. When the humans arrived from Ashen, Dawn Chant was almost wiped out. However, three of its descendants survived to this day, with grammatical similarities pointing to their shared heritage, although vastly different vocabularies due to their long isolation. The Parsendi are the descendants of the singers who found refuge in the Shattered Plains, and they continue to speak an evolved form of Dawn Chant. We don't know much about their language save for a few names and phrases, such as Esai, Narak, Neshwakadal, Nistar, Orialin, Ola Masvara. The Parshendi language is likely fusional. The Unkalaki live on the Horn Eater Peaks and descend from a rare mixture of humans and singers. Their language is polysynthetic and uses grammatical gender without an animacy system. Unkalaki names are typically very long poems in a single word, and nicknames are commonly used. For example, shortens to Lunamor, and would mean something like this. The Unkalaki language has a complex kinship system, with completely different words for firstborn, secondborn, thirdborn, and even fourthborn sons. We know more than a few terms in Unkalaki, such as Ulatmakai and Umalakaiki. We know why Unkalaki and Parshendi share a common ancestor in Donchant, but the third and final surviving language in the family raises many questions, for it is Shin, confirmed by Brandon Sanderson. Shin is the language spoken by the human inhabitants of Shinavar, 
the original refuge for humans on Roshar, the origin point from which humanity spread. So why would the Xin language have evolved from Dawn chant when the Xin people likely would have had the least contact with the Dawn singers? A few hypotheses are worth considering. The first being that the modern Xin descend from the humans who stayed in Shinavar and didn't migrate to the rest of the continent and break the deal humanity had with the Dawn Singers. The ancestors of the Shin probably would have had a better relationship with the Dawn Singers than the other humans, maybe even good enough to want to take the Dawn Chant language as their own. The second hypothesis is that when humans migrated from Ashin, they weren't a linguistically homogenous group. That is, they instead spoke many different languages. And so to communicate, they used Dawn Chant as a lingua franca, because it was the language native to their new home. This phenomenon is seen on Earth, whereby different immigrant groups in the United States, for example, speak English to one another, despite neither of them speaking English natively. We don't know much about the Xin language, other than that it is predominantly analytic, has an elaborate system of honorifics, and has a patronymic naming system for boys and a matronymic system for girls. Also, since Shinovar is bordered by the Misted Mountains, it has a very different ecological landscape than the rest of Roshar and much of its flora and fauna are descendants of invasive species from Ashin that the original human settlers brought with them. For example, Earth-like birds, dogs, and wine are extremely rare outside of Shinovar, and so the Shin have multiple words for different types of birds, dogs, and alcoholic beverages, whereas other Rosharians just call them all, respectively, chickens, hounds, and wine. We only know one phrase in the Shin language, a greeting. Tambalo Kentala the next language family is composed of those tongues which migrated from Ashin with the first Rosharian humans. There are two subfamilies, the Voran family and the Makabaki family. It is unknown whether these subfamilies had already diverged before humans fled to Roshar, or whether they diverged after, as humanity spilled across the continent. The Voran subfamily contains three known languages, and from analyzing the Alethi woman script, the known Alethi glyphs, and the Thailand glyphs, all of which we'll dive deeper into in the next video, as well as relying on a few Q&A quotes from Brandon Sanderson and Peter Alstrom, we can reconstruct the phonology of Proto-Voran, the common ancestor of Alethi, Vedan, Thailand, Harbranthian, and Herdazian. Proto-Voran's phonology had a typical five-vowel system, A, E, I, O, U, and was made up of the consonants Ma, Na, Nya, Pa, Ta, Za, Ka, Ba, Da, Za, Ka, Fa, Tha, Sa, Sha, Cha, wa, la, da, ya. As Proto Voran evolved into Alethi, the semi vowel strengthened, powdal nya cha became ya cha, the powdal stops backed, sa debuckalized but was replaced by tsa in a chain shift, the lateral fricative sha became sha. We also know that a vowel shift occurred, causing kalak to be pronounced as kelek, but that this didn't impact the five vowel system. Thus, the modern Alethi consonant phonology looks something like this. Ma, na, pa, ta, cha, ka, ba, ta, za, ja, ka, tha, tha, sa, sha, ha, va, la, ra, ya. The Alethi language really loves compounding as a means of derivation. We know that ha is a sentence final question marker, as in, and we know that the suffix nar means like, and the suffix lin means son of, but that these suffixes change depending on the consonant before them. Lin becomes rin, for example, following r. Each Alethi noun has two forms, a full form, which originally would always be a palindrome, but because of sound changes now very often isn't, and then a reduced form, which is only used with affixes. For example, the full forms of honor and life are senes and sagis, and their reduced forms are sen and sag. One incredibly interesting feature of Alethi grammar is the infixing of possessives. If you want to say tavas slight, for example, and you know the reduced form of the word for light is ado, then you split the possessor around the possessed noun, saying tavadovast. Similarly, koros's light would be koradoros. Dalinar's honor would be narisenar. And this works not only with names, but with compound nouns as well. There are two ways to compound in Alethi infixation and affixation. Infixation works like possessives. To say stormlight, you just put the word for light in the middle of the word for storm. Zeradore. But with affixation, you just smash the words together. Everstorm is just eternal plus storm. Calazeras. And a small side note about Alethi before we move on 
it has a lot of dialects because it's spread out over a large area. For example, we hear about Goron, which Real speaks, near the Sunmaker Mountains. Goron speakers speak in a slow drawl and change their O to A and their A to A. Not Corradoros, but Corradoros. Khadbranthian and Veden are also sometimes considered dialects of Alethi and other times their own languages, but sadly we have very little documentation of either. We also don't have documentation for Hevdazian, their close relative, which might have been influenced by Parshendi. But we do have documentation for Thailand, the last language in the Voran family. It's notorious for stringing consonants together. We know the phonology of Thailand by comparing its script with the Alethi glyphs, which we'll go into in the next video. Pa, ta, ka, pa, ta, ga, fa, tha, sa, sha, va, tha, za, ja, ma, la, ra. Thailand also has a typical five vowel system, but with a lot of vowel reduction, and stress is usually placed on the final syllable. We sadly don't know much about Thailand grammar. We know a few words and phrases though, such as Bavsk, Revsk, Tvunk, Tleven, and Sailorum Kabat Noor. Another quick side note, we actually know a lot about the Voran numbering system, common across most Voran languages. The numbers 1 through 10 are related to the names of the 10 heralds. Each number 1 through 10 has a reduced form used for affixing, the same way any noun would. To make numbers with more than one digit, just string these affixes together. Vev is 4, but Vevash is 46. Sadly, we know very little about the Makabaki, Iri, and Aimean language families. Adzish is the most spoken Makabaki language, but the family is incredibly diverse, and there are many more Makabaki languages we just haven't discovered yet. It is suspected that one or more of the Makabaki languages has quick consonants, but again we're not totally sure. Adzish definitely has the uviur stop, which makes it distinct from the other languages we've looked at so far. Iriali, Reshi, and Riren are the only languages known in the Iri family, excepting a few pure lake dialects. We know that Reshi sounds like barking, but otherwise nothing, and we literally don't know anything about the Aimean languages. So that's it for this video, and I hope you learned more about the languages of Rosha. Hidden in this video is the etymology for Kaladin's name, and if you find it, you can get bragging rights in the comments, and please like, comment, and subscribe with notifications to hear about the next video in the series, where we'll dive deep into the writing systems of Rosha. Thank you all for watching, see you next time.